I'm really excited to do this video for you on the black and red Air Jordan 1. And in front of me, I've got one dozen different varieties of black and red Air Jordan 1s. And from afar, these shoes look like they're very, very similar. But as we get up close and personal with each pair, I'll be able to show you all of the slight differences and intricacies that make up this one dozen pairs of incredible kicks. So we all know that the Air Jordan 1 was originally released by Nike in 1985. And if you go online to sneaker files, there's a dictionary of kicks that actually lists off more than 20 different varieties of original Air Jordan 1s. So even though there were like 20 or more colors of this shoe, the one that's the most popular is gonna be the one in front of me, the black and red edition, which has been nicknamed Bread. I wanna start here with the pair that originally released in 1985, and I wanna walk you through all 12 of these shoes. They're actually in chronological order from their release. So come on over here and let's have a look at this pair of OG Air Jordan 1 highs, the black and red edition. So you're gonna notice right away that this pair of shoes has a little retro card hanging on there, and you're also gonna notice that the shoes have a black and red box. And when you look up close at the box, you'll notice that Nike's describing the color of this shoe as black and red. We've come to know bread as black and varsity red, but in the early days in 1985, bread Air Jordan 1s were simply black and red. This pair of shoes is very desirable. It's worth about $3,000, and check out the condition of the upper of this shoe. It's nearly pristine. When you're looking at original Air Jordan 1s, make sure you look around the collar right here for chipping and cracking because that's the way that these shoes tend to deteriorate over time. This pair is in beautiful, incredible condition. Gotta love them, and like I said before, they're worth about $3,000. Come on over and have a look at the next pair of shoes that was also released in 1985. This pair is known as the AJKO and they're made out of canvas, unlike the original Air Jordan 1 that was made out of leather. This pair has a really cool orange box, and same thing when you're looking at the colors listed on this box, it's just gonna be black and red, not black varsity red and white, which like I said earlier is what we've come to know as the bread colorway. So the shoe's made out of canvas, but there are slight differences between the AJKO and the original Air Jordan 1. First off are these collars up here. The AJKO has a lot more padding than the original Air Jordan 1. And actually, as I'm holding them up next to each other, the original Air Jordan 1 is a little bit more of a high top than the AJKO. Let's look at the bottoms of the shoes. Check out the outsole of the AJKO, a very different pattern than the outsole of the original Air Jordan 1. And as we'll see later on when they retroed this shoe, they ditched the original outsole and sort of copied the original sole of the Air Jordan 1. Some other slight intricacies are gonna be the metal eyelets going around the laces right over here, as opposed to no metal on the original Air Jordan 1. And also have a look at the laces. The laces on the AJKO are like fat laces, like what people used to put on Adidas shell toes back in the day compared to the plain flat laces on the original Air Jordan 1. So these shoes came out in 1985, and back in those days there was no such thing as retros. Retros didn't come around until 1994, and let's move over to the third pair of black and red Air Jordan 1s, the first pair of retros from the Air Jordan line, released in 1994, and this pair was released alongside five other pairs of Air Jordans. We had two pairs of 1s, two pairs of twos, and two pairs of threes. And of course, this is the bread edition. Came in a really cool box. Actually, all six of the first 94 retros came in this box. And when you look at the colors on this box, again, black and red. No black, varsity red and white. That didn't come around until the next retro. These shoes are amazing. And the crazy thing about this pair of shoes and the other five retros released in 1994 is that they didn't sell well at all. They actually were marked down to like 1999, hit the clearance shelves, and then they sold. Nothing like what it is today, 20 years later, where the retro craze is more than ever. Let's work our way over here to the 2001 retro edition. This pair of shoes comes with a little metal Jumpman keychain, very cool, and alongside this pair of shoes in 2001, Nike also released the black and royal blue colorway that also had the Jumpman metal keychain. 
When you look inside here, you'll see that this pair of shoes is actually numbered out of 38,345. The black and royal pair is also numbered out of 50,000 pairs. These days, when Nike makes Air Jordan retros, typically they make between 200,000 and 500,000 pairs of those shoes. So you can see right here, 38,000 plus pairs, very, very limited edition. The quality of the leather and materials on these early retros is much better than it is today. Something special about the 2001 edition, let's have a look at the box right down here. And for the first time ever, you're gonna see black and varsity red as the colorway. Nike expanded on that and went black, varsity, red, white. White has to do with the color of the midsole on this shoe, and that's what we've come to know as the bread colorway of Air Jordan 1s. Let's work our way over here to the next pair. Came out in 2008, celebrating the 23-year anniversary of the Air Jordan line. We're going to show you three pairs of shoes from 2008. A low top, a high top, and a mid top. And this pair of lows is known as the Air Jordan 1 Fat Low. And fat has to do not only with the laces, but also the padding of the shoe right here. And they spell fat with a PH. So this pair of shoes is sort of like almost an SB version of a low top Air Jordan 1. And don't be fooled, Air Jordan 1s were actually released in low tops way back in 1985. Earlier I said there were more than 20 different pairs of original Air Jordan 1s. At least three of them came in low tops, but they didn't look like this, all funky with the fat padding, the fat laces. Pretty cool little logo back here, which is on the Air Jordan 1 and also the Air Jordan 2. It was ditched on the Air Jordan 3 for the Jumpman logo, but as you can see right here, this pair of fats has the old school logo as well as the Jumpman logo on the tongues. Which brings up another point. Sneakerheads love it when their Air Jordans say Nike Air on the tongues, as opposed to these Jumpman logos. And the dozen pairs of shoes that we're looking at here are about half and half in terms of whether they say Nike Air or whether they have the Jumpman logo on there. Anyway, this pair of fats is like an SB version of Air Jordans. And don't be surprised if in the future years to come, we start seeing Air Jordan SBs. Nike's already been talking about it and there are rumors that we're gonna have Air Jordan 1 SBs. Imagine how crazy that would be, these high top shoes with lots of cushioning for skateboarding. And it wouldn't be that crazy because back in the day, people actually used to skate in Air Jordan 1s mainly because they were so inexpensive. They got marked down on clearance and they have a lot of padding. Let's look at the high top pair that came out in 2008. The next pair, it's known as the Air Jordan 1 High Strap. And the strap, of course, refers to this strap that goes around the ankle right here. When you pull it away, the shoe looks like your plain old bread Air Jordan 1. But then when you put this strap right back here, it's sort of like an Air Jordan 1 mixed up with a Nike Vandal or an Air Force 1 High. Remember, Air Force One highs have a strap around there, the mids have a little strap, and the lows have no strap. But I like to think that this strap is much more like the strap on a Vandal because of the multi-colors on here. The straps on Air Force Ones are typically just one color, whereas on the Vandal, you'll see what you see here, stripes of different colors. This pair of shoes is very, very cool, a real sleeper, and I love how you can just pull that strap away and reveal the OG bred Air Jordan 1. So I said in 2008, we'd talk about a low, we'd talk about a high. Let's talk about a mid top and work our way to the front of the table over here with the Air Jordan Alpha 1. This pair of shoes also released in 2008 and it was celebrating the original Air Jordan 1, but it was infused with modern day technology. You'll notice that the upper of the shoe is highly perforated, making for a lot of breathability. You'll also notice that the collars and the lining is very supreme here. Lots of padding to make the shoe very, very comfortable. The shoe also has very different midsoles than the original Air Jordan 1, and the outsoles are different too. And the technology in this shoe is very different as well. This shoe has full Nike Zoom Air from heel to toe. And these shoes were worn by Dwayne Wade on the court who signed over with Brand Jordan and moved over from another Nike subsidiary Converse. 
Now, we all know that the Dwayne Wade Air Jordan contract only lasted a few years. He recently left Nike for a Chinese shoe brand. But anyway, pretty cool that Dwayne Wade wore these Air Jordan Alpha ones. He didn't wear this color. He wore the Chicago Bulls white, black, and red edition. Another thing interesting about this pair of shoes, so it's the Air Jordan Alpha one. There's also an Air Jordan 1 Alpha. Very confusing. That shoe is University of North Carolina blue, and it has a silhouette of Michael Jordan hitting the game-winning jump shot in North Carolina. It was released alongside a pair of Air Jordan 22 Omegas that featured him with his hands up celebrating the last shot. The theme with those two shoes was Alpha was the beginning of Michael's career, Omega was the end of the career. What I think is that it's confusing that Nike has two different Air Jordan 1s that are being called Alphas. Let's work our way to the 2009 edition from the DMP pack with the Boston Celtics shoe. DMP stands for Defining Moments Package, and this shoe celebrates Michael Jordan's 63-point game in the garden against the Boston Celtics and it's known as the Chicago Bulls colorway. But the crazy thing about that is Michael Jordan actually wore the white, black, and red edition, the same colorway that Dwayne Wade wore of the Alphas. So Nike sort of botched this release by including the bread edition with the Celtics when they should have really included the Chicago Bulls edition with the Celtics. Anyway, DMP is defining moments pack. Nike has celebrated the defining moments of Michael's career by releasing these two shoe packs. This one's very, very cool, and even though it should have been the other colorway, you still gotta love it. Let's work our way to the next pair. June 1st, 2010 is when this shoe released, and it was released at Nike outlets across the nation because they're all B-grades. When you look right here at the toe box of the shoes, you'll see that they're very creased up. Most of the band Air Jordan 1s are like this, and that's why they were released at the outlets. People lined up at the outlets, and they sold out the day of the release. This pair of shoes is very special because it commemorates the Air Jordan 1 being banned. When you look back here at the heel, you'll see a big X because the shoes were X'd out of the NBA. But there's actually a real legend about that story because nobody's ever seen Michael Jordan break out the bread Air Jordan 1s in an NBA game. The legend has it he was actually wearing a pair of Air Ships, a shoe that looks very, very similar to the black and red Air Jordan 1. But who knows what the real story is. If you can find a picture of Michael Jordan wearing bread Air Jordan 1s in a game, that'd be amazing. Send it over to me. No one's ever been able to uncover a picture of that. So this pair of shoes skyrocketed in value. It's worth about $1,000, which is absolutely crazy for a B-grade shoe and one that just came out a few years ago. But the hype is more now than it's ever been before. And to think that these shoes sold out at the outlets and then you go back to 1994 when the retros were first coming out and nobody even cared about them. Wow, Brand Jordan has done an amazing thing of making the Air Jordan line something that is so coveted that people line up anywhere and everywhere, including at the outlet stores. Let's look at the next pair of shoes, the AJKO Retro from 2012. We looked at the original AJKO earlier. And remember I told you that the soles of the Retro are going to look just like the soles of the regular Air Jordan 1 as opposed to what the AJKO soles used to look like back in the day. Other than that slight difference though, I think Nike did a great job with these AJKOs. They're in canvas because remember back in the day, AJKOs were in canvas. And when Nike started retroing the AJKOs a few years ago, they went a little crazy with it. And there have been a bunch of different models. Some of them aren't even canvas like the original ones used to be. But this is my favorite pair. And I think it's a real underrated pair of black and red Air Jordan 1s. Let's look at the next pair. December 28th, 2013 was the release of this shoe and sneakerheads waited like all year for this pair of shoes to come out. One of the more coveted Air Jordan releases that came out last year. Of all the Air Jordan ones that were released last year, this is one of the most popular. The most popular, of course, is the black patent leather with metallic gold. But after that, it would be this or maybe the black and royal. So these are called the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG. OG means original. They came with a box that looks like the original box of the Air Jordans. And then of course it's gonna say Nike Air on there on the tongues, just like what was written on the original Air Jordan 1s way back in 1985. This pair of shoes was released in very limited numbers, sold out right away. People that couldn't get their hands on them were really bummed. But then in true Nike fashion, they started releasing other black and red Air Jordan 1s. And that brings us to the next model, 
which is referred to as the unbred Air Jordan 1. It's called unbred because there are slight differences between this model of retro and this model right here. Namely, you'll see that we've got a red swoosh on the OG and a black swoosh on this pair. And then some of the paneling on this shoe that's red is black here and black and red here, vice versa. So it's the unbred. Also, this pair of shoes is in gym red, not varsity red. So the shade of red is ever so different than the varsity red. And this pair of shoes is a mid top as opposed to the high OG next to it. The mid tops are readily available. You can pick up this shoe right now online for $105. So it's so crazy how the slight differences between the OG and the unbred make one of them sell out at $140 and the other one still sitting around at $105. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed checking out these one dozen black and red Air Jordan 1s. A lot of people say it's the shoe that changed the game and I don't know how you could argue with them about that. But anyway, like I said before, from far away, the shoes look like they're really, really similar. But when you get into them, there's a lot of differences between them. And like we showed right here, it's amazing how these slight differences will make one shoe very, very popular and sell out and the other shoe still sitting around.